Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, and welcome, everyone, to our Google Plus Hangout with the Royal Canadian Geographical Society and the Canadian Association of Geographers with Canadian Geographic Education. My name is James Boxall, and I'm the director of the GI Sciences Center within the University Libraries here at Dalhousie University in a very windy and rainy Halifax, Nova Scotia. I'm also joining you today as a new governor of the Royal Canadian Geographical Society, my first official function in that role, which is a great honor and privilege for me. This is a continuation in the series on geography in Canada, established with the Royal Canadian Geographical Society and the Canadian Association of Geographers. Before I introduce our panel, I would like to thank our supporters, and in particular, Sabrina Doyle at the RCGS offices in Ottawa, who is acting as our hangout master of ceremonies behind the scenes as we speak. Today we are discussing the future of geographic education, and in particular in the context of the recently unveiled declaration advancing geographic education for Canadians, which was created on August 13th, and affectionately we call it the St. John's Declaration because it's in recognition of the location and host city, or the CAG conference where we developed the declaration. And it was first endorsed by the CAG members and executive there. But we'll get more into those details later on. And now to our panelists, and I should also say a few other people from across the country were going to be joining us, <laughs> unfortunately. They can't make it due to travel, and Google Hangouts aren't yet possible on airplanes at 35,000 feet. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to the panelists to introduce themselves, uh, starting with Amanda. Hi, I'm Amanda Hoykes. Um, I guess Dr. Amanda Hoykes. I uh, represent the University of Waterloo, and um, I'm identified as, I guess, one of the young scholars on the Canadian Association of Geographers. I teach human geography, but also teach uh, physical geography to an extent as well. And Kim. Hi, I'm Kim Wallace, uh, currently an educational consultant. I've been a teacher of students for geography for 30 some odd years and am now part of the Canadian Geographic Education Group. And I'm also currently a member of OAG, which is the Ontario Association of Geographic and Environmental Education. So um, the other thing that I think is uh, has been quite exciting is I've been part of the Ontario Curriculum Review for the last four years. So I bring that um, uh, understanding to the table as well. And last but not least, Rodolf in at Memorial University. Hi, my name is uh, Rodolphe de Villers. I'm associate professor in the Department of Geography at Memorial University. I'm a member of the Canadian Association of Geographers for many years. I'm also a young scholar uh, living in an even more so windy and rainy place than James uh, in Newfoundland. Um, I'm also uh, the chair of the, of the local branch of the Canadian Institute of Geomatics. Uh, so my expertise is mostly in geographic information systems and cartography. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, we have some questions that we want to pose to each other and, and discuss, um, so hopefully those following along will get a sense of how the declaration came about and, and its impact and also what our hopes are for the future. So I'll start off by just putting out, and how do you see the declaration? What is, what is its role? What is it all about? So let's start off with uh, Amanda. I see the declaration as playing a key role in um, continuing to um, strengthen that conversation that we're having around um, geography education, not, not only within our classrooms and not only within elementary, secondary, and post-secondary education, but also across the community. What does geography actually mean to us? And I think that this um, declaration enables us to have, kind of continue on with that conversation and, um, and have some basis from which to actually create more tangible change and, um, I guess, programming within within geography within Canada. Yeah. And, and Kim, your thoughts? Mm -hmm. um, the, I think the declaration brings an importance to uh, geography and what it means to different people. Sometimes uh, the discipline of geography can get morphed into um, a variety of meanings and by having a declaration it starts to clarify what we mean by geographic education and helps provide a focus and then it provides an impetus to um, to build supports to meet that declaration. 
So very exciting times. And Rudolf. Hi. Uh, well, the declaration, I think, plays a very important role. Like, uh, we all have a discussion about the importance of teaching geography you know, at all levels. And I think one of the big benefits it brings is a common vision, you know, a very strategic vision that's going to help different actors to actually move in a common direction. And that's something we're going to discuss a bit more later. Another thing I, I really think is important is trying to bring people that have very different backgrounds in terms of education of geography. So for instance, I'm a university professor, and at this meeting where we came with the declaration, there were people in charge of curriculums for the government. We had people, you know, working in high schools. And so very, you know, trying to integrate many different aspects of this. And, and just for the anecdote, for instance, my uh, my second neighbor, two, two houses just uh, right of my health me right now, is the person in the province of Newfoundland that is in charge of uh, curriculum in geography, you know, and I, I never really came across talking of work with him, you know, and more having some winter uh, snow blowing kind of discussion. Uh, but that's, you know, that's an example of how, you know, this goal can actually put people together to try to achieve a, a larger goal, which I think is going to benefit, you know, all of the geographic education in Canada. I, I think you're right, Rudolph, and I think um, this is a really good start for a common language and then building out. So if this is the common language, what does that look like? And uh, what would be really nice is, as you say, for all of those different groups who know they're a part of geographic education is to figure out how they fit in and then how, what, what do we want to see for the future? How do we move this forward? What needs to happen um, to meet the needs of people? Yeah. I, should, um, I should add one quick thing if people notice. I'm not being rude trying to drink water, but I was at the dentist just a couple of hours ago, so please bear with me if I do reach for water, everyone. I don't normally do that. Um, thank you all. I, I just, as I said earlier, um, part of my view of the declaration is a little bit more, uh, I guess, emotional and patriotic in that I remember as a high school teacher back in 1987, um, I remember posting the declaration from the U.S. Uh, Congress signed by Ronald Reagan onto the wall of my classroom. And I always wondered, that's kind of strange to have Geography Awareness Week from the U.S. posting it in a Canadian, why couldn't I have this from a Canadian organization or Canadian declaration? And after many years and lots of effort, it was really great to see the map of Canada in a red and white and declaration that I can post up. Um, I'll also tell everyone as well that uh, we'll be probably posting on the RCGS site and I'll be posting on my own personal blog later um, the declaration that people can take a look at and download in both official languages. So uh, that will be out there. So we're not talking about something that we're hiding. We're, we'll get it out to everyone. Um, I want to ask another uh, question related is that what do you think was, was going on in the background or in geographic education in general or in the Canadian context that caused you individually to put in your own time and energy into supporting the creation of the Declaration and coming to St. John's uh, to work on that? What actually was the thing that drove you to get involved? Amanda, why don't you chime in? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I ever claimed to be a geographer. Um, I didn't really know what a geographer was, and yet I've had a subscription to Canadian Geographic my entire life, and my, my dad has had one to National Geographic, and yet I didn't really, I couldn't necessarily identify what that meant. Um, in high school, I took geography in grade 9, I believe, maybe grade 10, and I was a really good map color, and I did really well in that course. And yet, um, coming in now, suddenly having a PhD in that same field, it's totally changed. Um, I think my, my connection is one in that I've kind of experienced what geography can be now that I've, now that I've been speaking with people who are geographers um, of any stretch of the imagination. And, and that, that language that Kim mentioned earlier, um, I think that really that's really opened my eyes, and I think that, I mean, if I, if I don't really know what geography is, or if I didn't know what geography is, and yet I have a PhD in it, and that really tells you something about not only our education system, but our system in general, and how we don't necessarily, we have this incredible opportunity to share this field with the world, and yet it's not really happening 
quite yet, or it hasn't been happening in the past as, as well as it could. So I think this um, participating has really um, got me excited to kind of help to mobilize that, or mobilize that, that, that energy, I guess, the collective energy that we do have to be able to bring this discipline to the forefront. And I think, I mean, I'm pretty excited to now claim geography as, <laughs> as something that I do and that I live and that I'm part of. Yeah. Yay, junk. <laughs> we, want to do a, we can do a little geography dance another time. Okay. <laughs> Kim, Kim, what's your what's your sense? How did how did you feel when you were uh, thinking about going to the meeting in St. John's? What drove you to do that? Well, it's interesting. Uh, and again, after being in the classroom, it, it is interesting that um, in meeting with parents, and uh, parents would come and say, you know, can't believe it, my kid actually likes geography. And um, so that kind of gave me the tale that maybe some of the geography that they'd had in the past was static and about memorizing and not the inquiry and the investigation of uh, who we are and where we live and making a sense of place. Um, so there was that part. So there is always that ex that. Um, that need or that desire to have a student pick up and say yes I really love this I want to do this and get that passion but I think what really um, it kind of goes back to what Amanda was saying about so so what is it what is what drives that passion and what was interesting is especially over the last four to five years trying to articulate well how is it that I think and what is it that I do that is unique as a geographer what makes me a geographer so um, I'm very lucky that um, I was in a position where I was afforded time to really look at some of the ideas um, and try to articulate those ideas in terms of putting together um, a curriculum. And of course, it's really important that you realize that I, I, I may have been the lead, but I certainly was not the only person. It was. It's a very inclusive process. So that's been very um, rewarding, being out and about and being able to to try and figure this out through a research-based process. So um, having come off a stint where you're invest investing time and energy for four years, it uh, I was very fortunate and felt very honored to be um, invited to the St. John's uh, Declaration meeting. And uh, it is, it's very exciting and it's still very um, interesting in hearing how people uh, view the knowledge and skills um, the concept development that are going to be needed. And my friend and colleague in GI science in Newfoundland, how did what what drove you to or and literally drove a short distance of course, <laughs> but what what brought you to the table at uh, at the meeting we had in St. John's? Well, I didn't really drive. You know, the meeting was in the same building. Uh, more or less. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. Um, well, I guess you know. So I, I work as an associate professor in a geography department. So my one of my work is, is teaching. So teaching is obviously something I do every day, and which I, I enjoy and I struggle, and I, it's a challenge constantly. Um, something that was common with um, uh, Amanda and Kim in their discussion is, you know, if they felt geographers and how being a geographer was. And for me, it's a different experience again. Is uh, I, I have never done any geography courses in my entire academic life. You know, so <laughs> and I'm going to explain is uh, I, I came across geographic concept through a variety of disciplines. So I, I studied in geomatics, uh, studying cartography and geographic information systems. I've studied before in, in biology and earth science, interested in space and relationship in space of things. And so hence I'm I was not coming to the meeting uh, purely as a geographer, but as something somebody that realized that uh, geographic knowledge and geographic literacy uh, transcend disciplines, and uh, and that's something very important for me. That's um, I was representing at the meeting. Actually, uh, I was officially representing the Canadian Institute of Geomatics uh, there, uh, trying to see how you know such initiative could be beneficial for our organization. Uh, because I'm the I'm the chair of the branch in Newfoundland, and 
but uh, I realized how many common issues different people were facing. Uh, if they were coming from pure geography, if they were coming from other related associations and, and experience. So, so coming to St. John's, which was, uh, you know, very short distance for me, was, uh, was actually a, a fairly, fairly big step as well, uh, trying to, uh, to cross all of my background in uh, different kind of science with my experience in geography as a teacher <coughs> and trying to make sure that we can come with a, a set of common skills and, and uh, uh, you know, integrated effort in trying to spread geographic literacy across a variety of disciplines and not only geography because I think the declaration started in geography but I don't think it can only benefit mm. geography. I think it goes much further. Yeah, and, and I, I think that's a point that all of us found during the meeting is that we realized we weren't talking just about formal geography in classrooms and schools and universities and colleges. I think we all realized that we were taking that K to gray and that much broader view that was the sense I got. Um, I mean, the reason uh, why I I got involved in, in this one particular effort, um, it goes back to the beginning, and that was 30 years ago, meeting my geography mentor, I guess you could say, which was Stuart Semple here at Dalhousie University. And Stuart uh, instilled in all of his students um, this desire and this understanding that you had to give back to the subject, you had to give back to geographic education, um, and you had to really uh, you didn't have to be a geographer to teach geography or to do a good job, but you had to really understand the nature of geographic education, geographic literacy, and take a view of the discipline itself and look at the fact that it is a structured way of doing things. It's, a, it's an approach. Um, it has a history to it. It's not just, you know, as the worst thing I hate hearing is geography is about everything. Well, it, it's not really about everything. It's about a way of looking at things. Uh, it's, a, it's a way of attacking a subject and coming up with answers and solutions. And I, the thing I, that drove me to go there is to make sure that in the declaration was some recognition that that was what the case was um, and that we weren't talking about something that some of us may have remembered from 30 or 40 years ago in school. Um, it, was, it was really a positive experience in that sense and I was, I was so happy with the number of people that came and devoted so much time to that effort. Um, and I think I've thanked everyone, but I have to thank them again. It was really a very grassroots, passionate exercise. And, and as we all know, one of the stories we can tell is we stayed, we had decided to end at a certain time and we didn't leave the room until we had fought and battled over every single thing in the declaration and argued through it with, with a great collegiality though and, and honesty. And, and it really created something which was very, very cool. Um, it was a very positive experience, I have to admit. I mean, uh, it, was, it was just a nice time. Um, so, so how did this come about, and, and what are some of the stories that we can tell about the Declaration? You know, what what did we actually do so that we can let people know that this just didn't occur by uh, uh, by us throwing around emails across the country or wherever? How did this actually come about? How did how did it, it take shape? What was your your experience of this? Um, I'm looking for sort of that personal story side here, not just this, the official history of it that we could tell. Amanda, how did it how did it play out in that sense for you? Amanda's on mute, I think. I, think. I know I'm good. <laughs> um, I, I think what what was interesting is that um, as we've all mentioned, there were such a variety of people there that um, I think. I think it was an experience of <laughs> utter collaboration at every level in terms of the language, in terms of the action and the approach, the history that we each bring to the table. I think um, I think that allowed us to create something that <laughs> was very specific but very inclusive as well. And um, I think that that was really something that, mm -hmm. I, I mean, we certainly it was it was a pretty a pretty you know it was a pretty incredible experience and I think that um, that that collaboration from all levels of of um, not only academia but all di all walks of life essentially um, who had something to say were were able to say it in that within that venue and collaborate to create that declaration which I believe is representative of not only the people who were there but the people who um, will benefit from it in the future and who are already engaging with that dialogue in a different way. 
Kim, Kim, what was your your sense, your your feeling about? Actually, I was really pleased that um, that when we were there, it uh, the people who were in the room represented a business side, uh, represented the academic research side, represented a very practical. Um, so, what do we do in schools? Approach represented a geographic society approach. So, something that would reach out into the public sector, and I think the diversity of the different sectors that were at the meeting uh, was very exciting. And to me, that's the part that um, was ex it, it makes it exciting, but it also makes it a challenge because mm -hmm. we, we bring different things to the table. And so it's trying to figure out, okay, we're all passionate about this, and how do we connect? And so that was also the part of the meeting is figuring out, oh, I connect with you on that. I see how we work together on that. We could do this together. We need to meet again. We need to bring more people in on this. And um, so it was the diversity of people around the table who didn't necessarily ha come in with the same reason or rationale um, for the way they operate on a daily basis, but in the end, we want the same kind of passion for, um, I actually, not the same kind of passion, but the same, we want something similar to hook onto and focus in the end. So it really was about the diversity of people. Um, and I don't know if that's happened before with uh, the discipline of geography, but uh, to me that was the really exciting part, seeing it all come together. Rodolphe, how, how did you, what was your sense while it was going on and, and did you feel the same sort of collegiality and differences from different perspectives from different sectors within the broad umbrella and broad community of geography? How did you, and bringing in that CIG, that Canadian Institute of Geomatics sort of view? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to depart from your instructions here and actually going to tell people how it worked, you know, because it's, it's very interesting, you know, so how, how do you make a declaration is you look like a yeah. good 20 people in a room uh, filled with Good coffee, uh, with liters of <laughs> coffee to survive the day, from you know eight eight thirty o'clock in the morning towards you know six p.m. or seven. I can't remember exactly. We started the, the night finished. before. Yeah, and we started the night before, and, and then there were different phases. You know, facilitators, and then we were put in subgroups and meeting again. And the groups were brainstorming on issues. And uh, for instance, we had little. Uh, labels of colors and we had to write, you know, challenges we see in the education and, and so those 20, you know, or 25, I don't know how many were exactly, uh, we're putting those challenges then we're sticking them on a, on a panel somewhere and then we're starting to organize them in themes and debating them and does I agree, does I disagree and then, you know, the, the diversity of people there make it very interesting because you have a lot of challenges that you never thought uh, or you have challenges that you thought you were alone, alone to have and then you discover that many other people at different levels also face the same challenge um, and or different flavors of uh, similar challenges in terms of, you know, I'm thinking about one for instance, we talked about the disconnect between the high school geography and the university yeah. level geography, you know, and that's something that different people perceive, you know, coming from different backgrounds and uh, so part of this was trying to, you know, brainstorm about what are the challenges we face and actually the declaration does not reflect the final stage of the discussion because we, we've been beyond the declaration. We actually thought of the next step, something you're going to discuss later. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was a very interesting day, you know, and, and having this diversity of people uh, was, was very rich. And uh, me coming from, you know, representing the, the geomatics uh, uh, side of things, I was trying to wear my hat and, you know, what's there for geomatics, which is slightly different than geography, although there is a big area of overlap. And, and I, I think that was interesting, you know, to, to bring our concern and also see how, how the field of geography was uh, was responding to this. But generally, it was a very nice day, you know, with a lot of open-minded people. And uh, and I wish all the meetings were like this, you know, everybody had a good faith and good discussion. It was a very interesting day. Yeah, and I, I like the, the the way that we can talk about how it actually occurred because um, you're absolutely right about force people into a room, lock the doors, and give lots of coffee. Um, that was one good part of it. Um, I can tell people, though, that are, are 
uh, joining in us on the, on the Hangout. Uh, there were 20, uh, 24 people in the room. Um, it ended up with tw about 20 of us signing the declaration because some people had to leave early. Um, we did start the night before with presentations and, and discussions, official like PowerPoint presentations and discussions uh, with a little reception um, that was really fun and a chance for us to break the ice, which was, which was necessary because some of us didn't know each other and then some of us knew each other very, very well. Um, it was uh, another thing we should let people know is, is uh, two, two of us, myself and uh, Carl Donner, who's the president of the uh, European Association of Geographers, um, tried as much as we could to facilitate some of the actions within the day to, to get people to move around and work through various things. Um, but we left a lot of that pretty organic because we realized that the expertise in the room and the experience of people in the room, the wealth of experience, was way more than, than we expected, or not, I should say way more than expected. Um, it was substantial enough that we didn't have to inter intervene and direct people too much in terms of the discussions. Um, it, was, it was more than I expected and it was probably I think um, Kim, you said it as well. It was one of the best experiences. It was uh, a collegial discussion amongst people from a variety of parts of the sector that just, you know, really drove home the need for this and the fact that we came up with a declaration and then had it endorsed by the executive of the CAG and the membership at the AGM, which was being uh, held there for the Canadian Association of Geographers in Newfoundland. Um, to have that endorsed then was really a positive, uplifting experience. Um, one little piece of history for it, I guess, is the thing that made, I guess, me decide to spend a little bit more of my, my extra time, if I uh, can call it extra time, um, on this was uh, I, pure luck and serendipity uh, this year, got in contact with our, our most famous astronaut, Mark <laughs> Hatfield who sent me a video from the space station that I could use in my classroom. And I was deeply touched and, and, and honored by that gesture of his. And when I saw that and saw the reaction of my students, I realized, you know, and this would have been in, in, in April, um, I realized that there was really a need to get this declaration done this year and, and, and move it forward. So uh, it was one of those little things of serendipity, luck, um, that you just get. And, and you have to run with it, and that's what we did. And, and I'm so happy and enthused by the fact of all the colleagues from all over the country who came together um, and, and helped me in this, in this effort. Um, so I'm greatly, greatly appreciated and indebted. Um, I should also mention that we had a perspective at the meeting, not just from within Canada, but we had Carl Donnert from the, Euro the association uh, in Europe, we also had, with Stuart Semple, having his connections to Australia and the fact that he's consulted there during their curriculum process, so we knew what was going on in Australia. And we also had a representation from the um, Association of American Geographers in the room. Um, and what the, what Nim could do was, uh, Nim Huan did was she presented uh, a view from the U.S. and how they were moving forward with their efforts. and. I really enjoyed that because I think that instructed us and directed us and gave us a sense of others have succeeded and have been doing some great things and that it's not a matter we haven't done anything, it's a matter of we can also probably catch up very quickly and maybe, maybe as we go to the next question in our, in our sheet here, is go to the next steps and see what more we can do. Um, so there's still a lot of work to do, um, but it's really, really really a good, good start. I mean, an unbelievably good start. Um, so at that, I'll use that as a little bit of a segue. Um, we've got this tremendous positive feeling amongst us, ourselves, and we're reaching out to our colleagues across the country and other associations right now um, to help us endorse this and move it forward. Um, but specifically, what do you think are the next steps or the challenges we face or the actions or very specific details of what, what what can we expect? What should we be doing uh, over the next very short term, looking to the goal of advancing geographic education for all Canadians? What should we do, Amanda? What would be your suggestions for us as a as a formal informal group that's continuing this effort, or or for the other associations that are leading this? I think that 
key to this entire thing is that continuation of the discussions, the conversations that we are having um, between us and um, certainly the AAG and the European geographers and the, the other people who are both part of this and who can be a part of this. I think we can certainly learn from them and they can certainly learn from us. I also find that because we're and I, I mean I I think early stages but I'm sure you think differently in terms of stage but uh, but we are in, in the, the declaration is written now now what um, and I think that that conversation of um, continuing that conversation is key and it's still new and there's still many many people who don't know about it and so I mean each of us from there and everybody who's a part of this Google Hangout um, now has some awareness of it and has some tools to be able to share with other people. So certainly I know that you're going to mention about um, posting it in various places and so certainly people will have access to it. But I think that we all have a bit of an obligation to continue to communicate and engage mm -hmm. in those conversations about what the Declaration does and not only the Declaration but geography itself and what role we can play within that um, that transition to to something bigger, I guess. Is is there one thing looking at, at what you do in your daily life as as a practitioner of geography? Mm -hmm. uh, is there one specific action that you could suggest um, to the community at large or to our associations and groups that are challenged or, or charged with carrying this forward? Is there one thing that you could suggest that we do as an action? I, I've taught several um, intro courses uh, as well as advanced courses in geography um, and I find that I continually am struck by, struck by the comment of <laughs> in their evaluation at the end of the term, I had no idea that, that was geography mm -hmm. and to be able to somehow um, continue to capture that enthusiasm and, and, and move it forward I think is really key. So getting more of that conversation going and then that, that I mean, they're in their first year of, high, of university, so they might be 17, they might be 21, 25. Uh, but the fact that they don't really know what geography means, or is, or what it can be, perhaps, whatever aspect we take, I think that that goes back to being able to transfer them some of that knowledge that we have as a collective group, um, anybody who's involved with this, and transfer it back to not only high school students, but their parents and anybody else who's trying to decide where they want to go with their careers or with their lives and what they're really passionate about and being able to say this is a viable area whatever the area is or however you define it it's a very a, a viable area that has great um, has great possibilities I guess um, whether within the future itself um, within one's own career or within the way that they actually live their lives so I think that, that continuing that conversation not only within the universities but within high schools, within el elementary schools and being able to identify what you're doing right now is geography and mm. it's pretty neat stuff. So I think that that's, that's, I mean that's what I feel needs to be happening and certainly I know within my own experiences I'm, I'm starting to head into the, or the high schools and kind of having those conversations because I think they're really key. Yeah, and, and I can also tell you, um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but on the Canadian Geographic Education site, mm -hmm. um, there are actually, we're starting to put up videos about uh, people at work or people and what they do and their careers and how, it, how geography is applicable to their lives and, and their work uh, and, and everyday life as well. And I think I'd love to see those sorts of, those sorts of things grow and, and start to see more of that and maybe more at the local level too and partnering with other groups. Um, because people tend to connect at a very local level as well. And I think that might be good. So I highly recommend uh, getting that sort of involvement and reaching out in that way. Um, mm -hmm. That's a very good thing. Kim, what, what, what's, uh, what's, how do you see the challenges and, and the next steps and the opportunities that we face? Like, what's the thing that you would want to just get done right away? Or well, well I think what you're, you're doing is at this point, we're talking about the perception of what geography is mm -hmm. and those videos that you were talking about I agree would really help people understand oh yes so that's geography um, and Amanda you mentioned the fact that we need to get out into into high schools and get into elementary schools 
to have them recognize how can I make that declaration come alive mm -hmm. and um, to me if we're going to reach out into high schools and into elementary schools we're talking about a curriculum and so one of the steps that I think we really need to look at is bringing the different governments together so that um, so that different provinces and territories can look at the declaration and figure out, yes, we connect here, hmm, this is important, I didn't realize, maybe we could improve this part, um, maybe we need more time with spatial skills, maybe we need to focus on interrelationships, but it, it's that whole discussion with um, the different ministries, provinces and territories in figuring out what does that declaration look like and mean for for their particular province or territory? And I think that is is going to be critical because that is at the level where it will influence uh, curriculum. So to me, that's one key part that needs to happen. The other um, the other part on a very local level, if we're trying to move things forward, I would really encourage whatever group, whether it's a local geography club or whether it's um, a geography group or a group of teachers working together, uh, I think it would be fabulous to take the declaration and I don't know if they're called criteria or principles, but look at those principles and figure out what does that mean, what, should, what can I do to support that what can I do or can we do as a group to promote these ideas and um, so I you know those are two things the, the ministries and then figuring out criteria to make this come alive I think would be really helpful what it really means is continued conversation and I don't think what I think is um, there's no one right answer and that is going to be really important that it be left open enough that people feel that they can contribute and learn at the same time because uh, as yeah. you know we all learn uh, from one another and um, actually that's the part that makes it exciting for me is hearing what others are doing and then trying to figure out mm, like that idea how can we make that happen yeah. right. So yeah, I think yeah. there's a lot of potential here. I like I like that note as well because what you two are, are sort of suggesting is something that stuck with me after the meeting <laughs> was uh, we're not talking about a top down, top heavy, you know, like here's a declaration and here are standards and here are all these things forcing down thou shalt do this or that and it will be geography. That's not what we ended up talking about. We ended up talking about the infusion and as I always say, it, it always comes down to that teacher in the classroom, uh, the facilitator with the students who can enthuse them. I mean, that's where it really occurs, and that's a local level thing. Um, certainly, we need curriculum. We need to look at a lot of other issues that we have to talk about across the country. But at the end of the day, we have to get into those classes. And I like that, Amanda, about getting to the classroom and going and visiting them. We have to get to those people because that's what enthused me when I started teaching it was the individual teachers who enthused me uh, and made me do what I did or, or change the way I approach things um, not some some book or, or curriculum guide or anything although those were of value it was the individual person and that connectivity to what really goes on um, so it's nice to hear that that's it's definitely there's a local flavor to this that we have to find a way to bring that conversation to bear. Rodolphe, uh, uh, how do you like what challenges are you looking at? And, and I mean, we have a different context, you and I, in some ways, along with Amanda too, but a slightly different one because we tend to stick with uh, we're we're in the technology part of the of geography more than others. Um, but how do you view this? Uh, what are the challenges and the, the critical things and next steps that you're looking at? Yeah, um, critical things. Well, there are many of them. Uh, something I was thinking when you were talking about the, the challenges, it reminds me of climate change, you know, and the think global but act local kind of thing. So you already have, and that's the problem I would say with uh, something like the Sanchez Declaration. If, if I was to look at it, you know, with the naive eyes not being part of it, I would say, well, a lot of those are motherhood statements. But it's actually, 
results from the process we've been through, which was trying to cluster <laughs> a lot of concerns. And, and actually, I can tell people that you know there has been a lot of thoughts in every single word we've been using in the declaration, and it's a very well thought piece. So the, the challenge, I think the, the San George Declaration you know, may not cover everybody's concern, but can certainly speak to a lot of people. And that's the only way you know, it can happen, by having those general concerns. Now, the challenge is, is not to scale it back to the deep, the local uh, level, like uh, Kim was saying, you know. So it doesn't stay only very general principles, but it actually can make a difference. Um, you know, uh, something I was thinking in uh, in light of what Kim was saying uh, that we should uh, put together is kind of a, a blog or something where actually schools and and people could actually say how they responded to the declaration. You know, how they are trying to reach different objectives. Uh, you know, you could even think of you know metrics or indicators, trying to see how things are moving in different places in the province. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, but clearly, you know, the declaration is not an end in itself, and that's that's always the risk with those things. Is when you release them, you know, some people think, oh, that's it. You know, we release the declaration. The declaration is a start. You know, it's a starting point, and then we have to go from there and just make those things happen. No. And that's that's most of the of the problem. In in my specific context, uh, higher education, I think linking better with the high school system will be something very important. And in Newfoundland, we already started to discuss this with my my neighbor, for instance, is how they can consult a bit more with the university when they design their curriculum, and how we can better link and connect to what's taught at the high school level, uh, so we can allow a better transition a bit in terms of skills and uh, and the way geography is taught. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, no, go ahead, Kim. You wanted to say something. Yes, yeah, so just yeah. um, the whole next steps and what do we need to do. Um, and James, this goes back to your point about it doesn't come from a book. Um, we need to be able to uh, get our kids outside, uh, mm -hmm. do field work. Um, experience the different cultures, the different landscapes, yeah. the different components of geography and it's that experiential part that usually I what I have found really turns kids on and it's usually after a walk around the block or a, a stream study or something that we've done outside where kids come back and say wow, do you still do that? Or I had no idea that we were actually learning. I was having so much fun. So it's that spark. The challenge is now, I think, getting kids outside, getting kids to have those different experiences that we know spark uh, geographic learning. And then the other part is um, the, the spatial skills component of geography mm -hmm. is... Um, is rapidly expanding. It's the it's part of the skill set of a geographer, and uh, somehow we need to be able to to help people recognize the skills that are needed, and I'm going to say the skills that are needed, but then the leverage of different career opportunities that are available once those skills are you know somewhat in place. Uh, the sky's the limit. And uh, to go back to Commander Hadfield, I, I'm sure, well, who, who knows when they're growing up, do, does someone stop and say, gee, I think I want to be a mechanic on the space station. What course do I take for that? I don't know. But if you're in geography and if you've learned the spatial skills that go with that, who knows what field that opens you up to. So I think... Mm -hmm. You know, that's another challenge, or are getting the skills into um, geography courses to make sure that we're leveraging our kids for what, what they're going to need for the future. Yeah, and I, I found, uh, I mean, one of my pet projects, I guess, or, or, or issues, things that I want to carry forward is getting the opportunity for more GIS in, in classrooms and linking that into field work and other things so that we can actually use the the plethora of technologies that we have now that are spatial spatially enabled um, and get kids to do things that are, are really solid work with GIS and with remote sensing and other things that we do in geomatics. Um, but also knowing full well that, that 
those things are tough to do and they need resources and we need training opportunities for teachers we need support for them um, and that that I mean there's a role for government and government funding and all this but that also requires us and the associations and like RCGS and CAG and the other associations to step up and say what can we do and um, that's why and, and when I received the literacy award the geoliteracy award um, I wanted some money to go towards doing that and I'm hoping that that will will grow over the next year or two and we'll actually be able to channel some funds and do some things with teachers on a more substantial and sustainable way um, but definitely linking in the activities of students in the field with technology with the classroom the facilitated having people the connection of universities having people from the university the geographers or from geographers from business and government coming into schools and universities and working with people together um, building that community um, we actually used to do more of that I can remember when I started teaching we did an awful lot of those things uh, much much more uh, there was much greater linkage between the universities government the private sector and schools and you could always be doing things um, there seems to be less now and I think I think it's time to shift that back um, but this is also the biggest challenge I'm looking at is the resource question and that's the one of how can we pull together the resources um, we uh, the people that were involved in the declaration are, are passionate and committed people about what we've been doing and we're certainly going to continue um, but we're also going to need to look at resourcing these things and that's going to require some others to step up to the plate um, and we can't we can't avoid that conversation at some point either um, Amanda do you have I, I, I know we're we don't want to go too long and, and some of us uh, Rudolph you have to leave at some point but Amanda do you have any any um, you know, final thoughts about uh, what you would say to people regarding the declaration and where it's going and you're on mute still I think I think um, I think that that conversation needs to, as I said, it, it needs to continue, and I think that um, it needs to. I mean, what we're doing is good. I, I truly believe that, and I think that that needs to continue to the point that um, people know about the declaration. They get they continue to get excited about it, and that it's just part of not only curriculum, but it's just part of what we are as as an entity or as a, as a larger way of, of living or teaching um, I think that I mean I think that I think the conversations just have to continue and I think they will mm -hmm. and, uh, and Rodolph any any final thoughts what's your next what's your next great adventure in this whole process of the declaration and moving it forward Oh, I wish I knew. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Um, you know, so I, I started teaching at university eight years ago, and I got increasingly interested in in teaching. And this also gave me an opportunity to actually connect a bit more into the teaching side of, you know, the formal side of uh, university uh, teaching. So you know, next next steps. I mean, it's going to take a piece of it and trying to move it forward. You know, like and like anything, we have to realize we can do everything, but let's do one thing correctly. So I'm going to try to find a, a sub piece that is appealing to me and trying to move it forward either through the Canadian Institute of Geomatics or through collaboration with people I met or through my current colleagues. Uh, so I can't tell exactly which piece I'm going to pick right now, uh, but uh, surely I will, I will move forward something and, uh, and, and likely related to what I was discussing earlier, which is the, the, the missing link in some way between the high school geographic education and, and the university education, uh, at least in my province. So. Yeah. Um, I know you and I have done some work, and we're both members of CIG, the Canadian Institute of Geomatics and stuff, and I, one of the things that I can, I can tell people is that I'm also co-chairing the round, uh, Canadian Roundtable on Geomatics, which is a community-based volunteer effort uh, with support from the Geosecretariat and our CAN. And we have representatives from a variety of associations uh, and provincial governments and federal government um, and, and private sector. And one of the things about that group that we're doing is looking at the geomatic sector in particular and trying to uh, in, enliven that and create a new strategy. Um, and they've been very supportive of this whole effort. In fact, that was the official hat I was wearing while I was there was as the co-chair of the roundtable. Uh, and 
I think connecting to those communities as well, um, and as you're saying, picking one thing and drilling down into it and providing that support, uh, and not trying to get bogged down in, in all of trying to accomplish all the things. Um, I know that's one thing that, that I'm looking at very carefully is picking a couple of things that are achievable right away um, while promoting the whole vision that's embedded in that declaration, uh, but finding the one thing that we can succeed on very quickly and, and give it some momentum or continue the momentum. We already have a lot of momentum and positives, uh, but continuing it forward. Um, any final thoughts um, from you, Kim? With uh, with your your good friend who was there, we noticed uh, I noticed a, a little puppy dog there in well, participating my, in our hangout. Your puppy was. Yeah, my apologies. I no. uh, I I did think my mic was on mute. So <laughs> anyway, uh, yes, and actually I should say uh, the person joining was Quartz. So how Quartz. appropriate is that for a name? Micah is having a nap. Anyway, um, <laughs> true story. Yeah. Um, I actually, I really look forward to my role in Canadian Geographic Education in fleshing out what this might mean as a part of our CGS and education uh, across the country. Um, and I also look forward to, as a part of CGE, as I sit on the board with um, OAG, the Ontario mm -hmm. Geography Group. So I'm sure what will happen is uh, we'll take this and flesh it out. And it's a very exciting time for us in Ontario because we do have a new geography curriculum being rolled out. So, so very, very timely that this has come about. And maybe the two can work together to explore what this really means for not just for, for kids but for all Canadians. And that's something as well, that this is uh, not just school geography, this is our K to grade view, so we're inclusive, very inclusive of other levels, uh, but it is for all Canadians. Um, I should also tell people that the declaration, while it's been endorsed by, by several groups and with, uh, with Esri Canada, our, our, one of our larger GIS firms in the country, um, I can also tell them that the Alberta Geomatics Group this Wednesday is hosting an event in Calgary and they'll be endorsing the declaration there at a, a social event in an art gallery where they're doing a display of geomatics and art which is amazing um, and hopefully we've we've asked to see we've asked to see if Commander Hadfield who's in Calgary at the time will be able to go by and just say this is great you know promote the video that he gave us from the space station and maybe sign the declaration and then the, at the same day, because it's GIS Day, the Geomatics Association of Nova Scotia will be hosting a meeting here in Halifax. And they'll be endorsing and will be presenting it at their meeting, and they'll be endorsing it officially as well. So there are uh, groups rolling out as time goes on, more and more of these communities, and they're related to other communities. So that it's like that little, pe maybe it's a pebble in the, the water, that we have a ripple effect occurring here, which is very nice and it, it's in keeping with the organic passionate side of this how the declaration came about which is really an uplifting thing um, it's it's all, I think it's all very positive um, we we should wrap up now but I'm also going to let people know that um, I'm going to be posting some thoughts on my personal blog uh, that I have a, a couple of them but one that I use with my students I know Sabrina and RCGS and everyone there will be posting things on the RCGS site and Canadian Geographic Education. And with, I'm hoping sometime in the next short while, the link to uh, a downloadable PDF of the declaration in English and French. Um, and then I'll be uh, posting that as well. And if people want to connect or, or find those, they can check out the RCGS uh, website, rcgs.org, um, or they can always find me on Twitter. That's one of the easiest way and it's at James uh, at James GIS, James GIS, one word. And I can I can post things there very quickly or point people to the links and the blogs and the websites very quickly off Twitter, a Twitter feed. Um, but it's it's been great and uh, I think we should also let some people know who weren't at the RCGS meetings last uh, last Wednesday, wasn't it? Last Wednesday that um, we were really fortunate that the Governor General, uh, His Excellency Dr. David Johnson, the Governor General of Canada, was was there as patron of the RCGS and made, uh, oh, I thought, was a wonderful speech. 
uh, about the centrality and importance of educators in education uh, in enhancing our understanding, appreciation, and protection of Canada bibliography, which is uh, quite was quite nice. And uh, the Prime Minister and and Mrs. Harper were there as well, being inducted as fellows of the society, and that was great too because. Um, Mrs. Harper gave a, what I thought was a really nice uh, personal view of her experience with geography and her view, and I thought that was a really nice touch to the to the evening. It, it gave something, uh, which was a really good positive takeaway for everyone. And we also happened to have Roger Tomlinson there, the father of GIS, the creator of GIS, on his 80th birthday, um, and 50 year I think it's 50 51 years now that GIS has been around and having him there and getting a standing ovation was was really a highlight to the evening so that evening was wonderful and, and hats off to everyone at RCGS and everyone there it was just an amazing occasion and, and a good really good positive opportunity to launch the declaration so I, I think we're on really solid footing and I'm looking forward to the future um, so without further ado thank you so much everyone for joining in um, and Amanda and Kim uh, and Rodolph, thank you for participating in your insights and and your continued support and your passion for this and for being there in August with all of us and, and contributing to the uh, to the declaration. It was a wonderful experience and it it's as I tell my students, this is step three in one hundred steps. So we've just started, but it's it's a great, great move forward. And thank you, Sabrina, uh, in the background, our our Google Hangout host, and to RCGS uh, uh, and the CAG and all the groups who've endorsed and supported the declaration and we hope to be chatting again soon and continue the conversation. Have a wonderful geography week and remember Wednesday is GIS day so enjoy. Thanks Sabrina and we'll talk to you later. Cheers. <laughs>